Good evening, good afternoon. Welcome to Focus on Liberia, West Africa. Uh, I'm your West African correspondent, Edward Amara. Coming to you with the latest development on the continent, giving you update on events that happened, all things that are currently happening on the continent. Focus on Africa uses this particular platform to inform its numerous listeners, by and large, about Africa, important events that take place on the continent, things that we should know, things that we should do, and those that we should avoid, especially when we are approaching election seasons. We are experiencing, we are experiencing different type of political development. Some are definitely not entertaining. Some can even lead to the devastation of certain countries. Focus on Africa uses this forum, as I said initially, to actually inform you, educate you, and tell you about things that uh, you should be aware of and things that uh, we Africans need to take caution of. Welcome to this platform. You are free to give your honest input on the events, the running of the program whatsoever. First, we are going to start in Sudan, because Sudan is almost on the top of every news today, or around two weeks back, because of the current political struggle that is going on into the country, because of some unscrupulous, selfish, and greedy mentality of the two warlords. They have decided to divide the country and send it into a total pandemonium where people have been killed. Children are suffering and it is making women widows and making men also widowers. Some families have actually been cut apart Why certain people do not even know where their close relatives are. There's nothing like education into the Sudan for now, Northern Sudan, and almost the, 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 the state is in a total chaotic situation. We are seeing international communities, instead of helping to resolve the conflict in the Sudan, they are all evacuating their citizens, and those evacuees are actually happy landing on safe soil after they were in an area where it was actually unpredictable when one was definitely died. The, the, UN, the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, has actually called on, this, on the people in Sudan to ensure that peace and sanity should reign, while all other African countries are also saying that they should continue to assess the case in Sudan. Uh, he, the, the UN chief has actually arrived in Nairobi, Kenya, to assess the situation in Sudan and to see how the crisis could end. But unfortunately, the two leaders are so bitter. The RSL, that is the Rapid Support Forces, because of their numerical strength and the, with the dwindling number of the Sudanese army, they do not want to be amalgamated with the Sudanese army, and the Sudanese army will have the opportunity to rule the, the, the military. The RSF, which is a breakaway faction and formerly known as the Janjaweed Militia, paramilitary or the Rapid Support Forces, one actually to take over the military uh, command of the Sudan. But the, uh, the, the, the Sudanese army led by Abraham, who is arguably, uh, unarguably the president designate now into the Sudan, has refused to concede that, and there is bitter war into the country. People have been killed, molested. Humanitarian agencies have been attacked. Drug stores or have been looted, and also hospitals have been bombarded. Last week, I was last day, out of the 59 hospitals that are actually in Sudan, that are actually in Khartoum, the capital city, only five we are functional, the 54 we are not functional. Why? Uh, Government parasitas have been designated at areas of target. Warlord who we are convicted under Al Bashir regime have actually been released, and they are vowing to ensure that they also make a revenge and some, in one or two ways, set Al Bashir free. 
So everybody is just worried with the great situation into the Sudan. People are being stranded, like Nigerians. Some of them are stranded. South Africans have evacuated their citizens. Even most West Africans have evacuated. If I miss West African country have evacuated their citizens. The like of UK is trying her best to ensure that all our citizens left the country. America, China, Russia, everybody. So the hypocrisy of the West is exposing our Western country. And unfortunately, uh, these same countries that are evacuating their citizens to a safer place, call their homes, are the same countries doing all necessary things to ensure that the war continue fighting to the Sudan. Because America, Great Britain have our own interest, while Russia and China have their own interest in the rapid support process, read by MDT. So to, to this particular stage, all Abu Sudan is so bleak, we pray and hope that things like that should not continue. Let's go into Rwanda. Rwanda is being led by Paul Gagami. He actually took power since 1996. He managed to end his, uh, the genocide. He was being accused of being one of the perpetrators. However, since he's coming into power, he has prosecuted a lot of people. Some of them are in prison. He's known like, uh, I think Paul Gagami is like uh, a benevolent dictator. He does not encourage uh, challenge when it comes to power struggle. Nevertheless, he has empowered women. In fact, when you watch at Luanda, Luanda is the only country in on the world, or on the continent, or on planet Earth, that have the largest number of female politicians that are employed. Some of them are employed. Female politicians in parliament, they are they occupied enough and influential and influential uh, governmental positions. With all the violation that is going, the mentality of of America, as long as there is what they call uh, 50 50 percent. But in Rwanda, it was 50 60. And today, Pokagami has even elected his, de his deputy now is now a female president. And there's a possibility that should he decide to leave power. Is going to ensure that a female rule uh, Luanda. And with all, maybe even if he can corrupt and do whatsoever, don't, don't expect him to, to don't expect him to definitely be prosecuted because he has laid the foundation and have the absolute wealth of doing everything he can. Yesterday, up to today, 100 people have been killed into Luanda from heavy downpour uh, is happening to the Western progress. And there appears that the situation will continue and a lot of people will lose their life. Property are going to be destroyed. The local media even reporting a number higher than that. However, the government has promised to ensure that it prevents uh, the destruction of property. But it was being signaled quite a long time ago that uh, when seasons like this reach, the, the, the water situation, uh, the downfall of in, in Rwanda is going to be heightened, especially in the Western problem. But better caution we are not actually put in place by trying to make certain protect, uh, proactive measures that may actually prevent the death of those citizens. Because of unpredictable things, it was predictable. It means those life and property lost could have been preventable had the government done have necessary steps to ensure that things like that should not come and befall the country. Unfortunately, they are even expecting that the flood and last slide will increase by nightfall and the victims are also going to shoot up. So it will take time to even understand how many people actually lost their life. And we, we find it very difficult on how to have a holistic reporting system because most of the route actually leading to the province where this particular flooding and landslide are taking place have actually been blocked of water and other more that do not actually allow the access of vehicles and humanitarian agency. The situation into the western province of Rwanda is so pathetic and there, it is, there is a total worrisome act that by the time the rain ends, a lot of damage may have been caused, and this thing may be devastating and it will result into another disaster or catastrophe. 
Kagakami is saying he's doing everything he can to ensure that uh, most people are evacuated. And most of the evac uh, those who are being evacuated now, those evacuees, are, thank are thanking the government for making some prudent measure to ensure that uh, the situation does not escalate. Then uh, let's come to Nigeria. Nigeria MP plead for UK mercy on convicted senator. We all know Senator Ikwe Mandu was convicted in some part of March because of his dealing in human organs. He actually have his daughter who is still in the UK, in Newcastle, per se. She's in the university over there. She's actually suffering from an organ problem, kidney. Ikwe Mandu actually came into Nigeria I used one of those Nigerians to get the person back into the UK, not properly cancelled with the notion that I'm going to help you and give you certain facilities. Just come and be into the UK with my family. Upon the arrival, he took the man to a hospital in London, where the man was meant to undergo a twist, a, a, a taking out, maybe they would have what, uh, excavated one kidney out of him and also implanted into Ikumandu daughter. But the doctors, knowing their professionalism, call upon the man, try to cancel him, and tell him exactly what he's about to undertake. And it means that uh, he would have actually, he, he, would, he is expected to undertake a lifelong therapy. If the man have that financial uh, background, and if the man actually understood why he has been brought there, if whether it was to his consent, it was based on that consent form that the man became panic with that apprehensive mood, he left the hospitals discharged by the doctors instead of them trying to carry on the, 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 the operation. He checked into one of those uh, police stations in London with something like pyjamas on him reported the case, the police investigated the case, apprehended uh, Senator Iquimandu, his crew who orchestrated the entire act from Nigeria. They were all convicted and sentenced to different time of imprisonment. However, the Senate, the Parliament, and even ECOWAS are actually asking the UK to tamper justice with mercy and release Senator Iquimandu unconditionally. They are saying that it is one of the strongest backbone of ECOWAS and AU. And this is the first time that you are actually involved into crimes, meaning he should actually be released or given a kind of maybe just a short sentence and the promise that he will never repeat such things and the man in question has actually rejected his action. So this was a premeditated act. Another person's life would have actually been thrown into everlasting trauma. Who knows what he would have actually become at the end of the day. And to the, the side part of this, that when this man left the hospital, Iquimando called him and threatened him. And if that man decides going back to Nigeria, he will do it at all costs. He will take the kidney out of the man at all costs. And if the man can remain to London, they, we do the operation on him. And he will help him gain maybe international spouses, one or other thing, and made his life viable, rather than having his two kidneys. But the man prefer having his complete part instead of being in handicap to save another person's life. That is why the parliament and other people think that that man should be actually granted mercy they should tamper justice with mercy. So let's see. We come here. Police surround uh, Zambia ex president home in Lusaka. Egalungu was actually defeated by uh, President uh, Ikandi Echilema in 2019 in Zambia. He was actually being accused of various types of crimes. Entire, ranging from corruption. Under him, most government officers lost their job. He was accused of managing a very poor economy 
and he even made Zambia not to be able to pay their debt to IMF. The, almost, the economy almost went into total bankruptcy. Gambia was even denied be, uh, what economy bailed out by IMF because of her failure to pay certain portion of the loan that she took, which was actually meant to be paid annually. When uh, Ichilema took over, he promised to prosecute everybody. However, this latest case, case came about when three vehicles being discovered in the former in the in the home of the former president that are allegedly owned by his wife, which are so costly, and they believe that these are government property. The home has been surrendered. The Chilema and his wife are in. Police are at the corridors, scenery area in the compound. His party has released a statement saying that it's a violation of their right, especially the right of the former president. And it has been seen as a political account meant to destabilize their political party and maybe throw the man's political ambition into a total end. Why the president said he has no dealing with what is going on. It is up to the police and the ACC to investigate with our independent body. He has got so we 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 are hoping that situation may be to be solved. But there is an impassive situation in Zambia as I speak. Historic peace talk in Ethiopia and without a deal. Arumu have actually paired themselves with Tigre to fight against the government since 2019. They made successful battle, but they are unable to overthrow the Ethiopian government. Ethiopia, under Addis, under Abiy Ahmed, successfully struck a peace deal with the Tigrayan forces, which included the Arumu forces. Peace deal have actually been going on, but they are actually seeking for cessation. They want to become independent from Ethiopia, which actually the central government is refusing. Negotiation we are not going on in the Sudan, and uh, ministers or representatives of the governments we are there. Unfortunately, they said the peace talk we are largely successful, but there was no permanent deal which they hope to continue the negotiation and they wouldn't want the country to re be relegated into another status of war fighting. Both the people of the Aromo or the Aromians and the Tigrayans are hoping to see that there is permanent peace into the region. And neither the government of Ethiopia is also willing to go into another battle. Finally, Mugabe's daughter in 80 million divorce, Bona Mugabe, has a daughter, two sons, and one stepson. He died without leaving a will. However, his family is being headed by Grace Mugabe, a summer secretary, who died after, I mean, who took became his mistress after his wife died. He was actually serving as a secretary. Grace was likely accused of having an eye on the power of, of Zimbabwe. That was why her husband was upstairs out of power, placed under house arrest, and in one or two weeks forced to resign. He ended up to join the opposition uh, uh, movement, People's Movement for Democratic Change, or MDC, Movement for Democratic Change, led by Mong Chang Rai by then. He's also dead today. He accused the government. He had even wanted, when Robert Mugabe was still alive, he was also alive, sick with kidney disease. But Mugabe was alive, strong, not with a particular disease. Uh, Changorai expressed regret. Even when uh, Mugabe was being overthrown, it was expected that he could have been called on to a negotiation table to see how he could be included into the government. But unfortunately, the Zanu PR party only over ousted Mugabe. It was just like a change of name or nomenclature.
from Emma from Robert Gabriel Mugabe to Emma C. Managagwa, known as the crocodile. Today, uh, the country is being left with huge wealth. The latest divorce case have exposed to the Zimbabweans how clandestinely uh, the, the, the Mugabe family own huge amount of wealth into the country. Although the spokesperson of, 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 of the Mugabe family have vehemently uh, make me a come out with a Buddha statement claiming that they do not own property up to that 80 million, especially the daughter Buna. The man want to have custody. They have a share custody of their three kids. They actually got married in 2014 when leaders across the world actually attended the wedding. The one property that are worth 80 million, including land, cars, vehicles, farms, and other things to be shared equally. He said they actually own them on the gesture of uh, Robert Gibbet Mugabe. However, he did a lot of other jobs to ensure that uh, those property become theirs. Um, if he's, they, they are divorcing to the Obona file in for a divorce, he is not going to forfeit everything. The court is proceeding and nobody knows what the judge will decide. However, one should not overrule or underestimate the power that the Mugabe family still possess into Zimbabwe. Of course, by virtue of fact, the like of Emerson and others know exactly how they gain wealth through the leadership of Robert Gibe Mugabe, who led the country for almost four years and he died when he was 98. Thank you for listening. This was Edward Amara, Focus on Liberia, West African correspondent. To end the news, the main headline once more UN chief arrived in Kenya to assess the Sudanese political crisis. Then over 100 people killed in Rwanda through land uh, plot and landslide. The Nigeria MPs plead for, U for UK to temper mercy with justice and free Senator Ikwimandi, who was being convicted for trafficking a young man into the UK to harvest his kidney. Then uh, four police surround uh, the former president home of, the, of Zambia, uh, Egalungu. Then five will have historic peace talk in Ethiopia, actually, and without any final conclusion. Then uh, the final story is Mugabe's daughter in 80 million divorce case scandal. Thank you very much. Good night. Join me tomorrow. Same time, same place, same area. Thanks for listening.